We've already seen that a deductive argument is any argument that aims to show that its conclusion must be true. In other words, a deductive argument aims to guarantee the truth of its conclusion. Now, not all deductive arguments succeed in this aim. A valid deductive argument may be defined as a deductive argument that has this feature. If the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. Here's an example of a valid deductive argument. This argument here. The first premise, all dogs are mammals. The second premise, all mammals have hair. And the conclusion is, so, certainly all dogs have hair. The word so, of course, is a conclusion indicator, and it's this word that tells us an argument is actually being given. And the word certainly indicates that this is a deductive argument, that the argument is claiming the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. So the word certainly is a deductive indicator. It tells us we have a deductive argument. The word so is a conclusion indicator, identifying the conclusion and by uh, logically uh, the rest is premises. And let's think about this argument. Supposing that the premises are true, would it be possible the conclusion is false? If the premises are true, if it's true that all dogs are mammals, and it's true that all mammals have hair, then certainly it must be true that all dogs have hair. And so this is a valid deductive argument. If the premises are true, the conclusion indeed must be true. Now compare this argument to this one. Suppose someone reasons this way. Ann and Bob are cousins. Bob and Sue are cousins. Therefore, certainly, Ann and Sue must be cousins. First of all, the word therefore is a conclusion indicator word, so it tells us that that's the conclusion. And by seeing the word therefore in, the, in, the, uh, in this presentation, we can tell that an argument's being given and that these are the premises, that's the conclusion. The word certainly indicates that this is a deductive argument. The word certainly says that the arguer is claiming the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. And the word must is, is sort of an extra deductive indicator word, making sure you know that the claim is this must be true if these are true. So certainly and must both tell you this is a deductive argument. But does it succeed in showing that the conclusion must be true if the premises are true? Well, let's think about it. Suppose it's true that Ann and Bob are cousins. Just suppose for the sake of argument, this is true. Suppose it's true that Bob and Sue are cousins. Must it be true, given that information, that the conclusion is true, that Ann and Sue are cousins? And if you think about it, it's possible the conclusion is false, even though the premises are true. One possibility is that Ann and Bob uh, are cousins. Bob and Sue are cousins. But Ann and Sue are siblings. It's possible they're actually sisters, even if the premises are true. So this argument does not succeed in showing that the conclusion must be true if the premises are true, even though it aims to. So although it's a deductive argument, we call it a deductively invalid argument. So a valid deductive argument is a deductive argument that has the following feature. If the premises were to be true or are true, then the conclusion would have to be true or must be true. And an invalid deductive argument is a deductive argument that's not valid. But it will have this feature that it's not the case that if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Do you want to come in here, Mark? Okay. I've got a question. Okay. Is that pen? Yeah. If I'm understanding this right, yeah. let's think of this argument. Mark, that's me. Mark is 20 feet tall. That's my premise. This is going to be a deductive argument. So it's going to be fast. Thus, Mark is over 10 feet tall. Okay. Okay. 
Would that be valid or invalid? That's a good one. And, uh, and if you put the word must there, you'd be telling us explicitly that you're giving a deductive argument. Okay, I did okay. that verbally, but I'll do it. So, so the question is, is this, a valid, is this a valid deductive argument or is it an invalid deductive argument? Mark is 20 feet tall. Why don't you stand up, let's see. Six foot three in real life. Yeah. Okay. And uh, therefore, he must be over 10 feet tall. So, of course the premise is false, and of course the conclusion is false, but, Hypothetically speaking, suppose the premise were to be true. If the premise were to be true, would that mean the conclusion must be true? And then you ask yourself that question. So it looks like if the premise is true, the conclusion is guaranteed, yeah. which makes it a valid argument. It is valid. So it looks like it's a thought experiment. You just you forget, the re forget about the real world. You pretend the premises are true. Imagine your mind if the premises are true and see if they would absolutely guarantee the conclusion. Yes. So the premise might be true, might be false. That's irrelevant at this stage. We're just trying to figure out if the premise provides enough information to absolutely guarantee the conclusion. And uh, that's a good example, and it does guarantee the conclusion. Mm -hmm. The information in the premise, if true, would prove that the conclusion must be true, and therefore it's a valid argument. Now, the premise is false, but validity doesn't require a true premise. And so, so Mark's argument, I like that, Mark's argument illustrates an important thing to keep in mind. Your it's penmanship's better though. You think so? I think your penmanship is better. Oh, it's okay, but you were down on your knees. Yeah, that's true. So Mark's argument illustrates an important point. It's not required that the premises of an argument be true in order for the argument to be valid. Just, An argument can be valid even though its premises are false. It's just logically good, but the factual issue is something else. The facts are one thing, validity is a separate thing. All that's required for an argument to be valid is this. If the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. That's all that's required for validity. So here we have false premise, false conclusion, and yet it's certainly a valid argument. Very nice example. And let's just mention at this point where we are, because uh, people might be wondering, where are you filming this? Should we yeah. tell them? Might as well. We're in Edmonds. This is a part of the Edmonds waterfront. We've got the ferry over there. We're going to try to get as many of these videos to be in various parts of uh, the Seattle Bellevue area, so you can kind of get a sense of where we're coming from. Uh, but this is a very pretty area. We've got some waterfront, got some beach, people playing around on the sand. Well, it's been fun. And Edmonds is just north of Seattle. Uh, on Puget Sound, which is a large inland body of water. And we're on the beach where people scuba dive and swim and all that stuff uh, on a sunny October day. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Does that work? I think that's great.